Good morning, um, good afternoon, uh, good evening, good night. Um, welcome to everyone who's joining today. Um, I'm going to kick off uh, quite rapidly with what we're about to do. Um, there's lots to uh, talk about and hopefully we'll maybe try some interaction today as well as possible. Um, I'm going to talk today a lot about um, how to build mindfulness into your life to make it easier for you to actually practice because uh, I know that's a very important aspect to actually make the time for it. Um, interestingly, one of my students once called, once defined mindfulness as making time. So I thought that was quite an interesting definition. Um, first things first, though, let's get the mobile phone switched off. My phone actually rang just a few moments ago. So I'm just going to switch that off myself. So that's all done. Uh, you should have your headphones on. Um, I'll make an attempt to mute my um, microphone while we're in the pauses section. And uh, remember to keep your eyes closed when you're meditating. Uh, then you won't be distracted by what you see behind me. Uh, the reason I do this in an office, in a working office, is because I want to illustrate that managing distraction works anywhere. And uh, with practice, it really can work anywhere. Uh, so let's just kick off, as we always do, with a little pause meditation. So if you could just get yourselves um, into a position that you get into when you meditate, get your feet nice and flat on the floor, get your hands in contact with your body in some way or shape or form. Some people like to put their hands together, put them in between their legs. Some people put their hands on their thighs. If your back is, is okay, you've got a decent back, take it off the back of the chair so you can't actually peel over and fall asleep. Um, if you've got a bad back, just lean back against the chair and give yourself some support. And uh, do all those things you do. Um, allow yourself to come to your physiology. Allow your focus to become uh, quite internal. Use your body. Use this incredible mechanism that you inhabit. Uh, let your eyes close down and use that act of closing your eyes down to again bring your attention inside a little bit. And again, breathe in through your nose. Remember that the reason we do this is that because there's a nerve in the nose that connects directly with the heart. So it's the easiest way to become instantly physiologically aware of your breathing. So allow yourself to come to that sensation and, and really watch and really observe the breath entering the boundaries of your body and really observe the breath exiting the boundaries of your body too and really let your breathing do its thing remember your body doesn't need very much oxygen in this position so really allow your breathing to lengthen and really allow your breathing to deepen and really allow your breathing to slow so really let it regulate let it self-regulate and what I'm going to do is I'm going to time a really quick 60 second pause and I'm just going to go through this like you're seeing it for the first time because I know some of you may be joining us for the first time. The trick, if you get distracted, is to actually allow yourself to be distracted long enough to note what you're being distracted by. So what you're about to do is you're about to maintain your focus on your breath. You're about to really watch your breathing coming into the boundaries of your body and really watch your breathing in your mind's eye exiting the boundaries of your body. And really simply enjoying that very simple, very natural process. Now, some of you might get distracted by a thought or a memory or a feeling or pain in your body perhaps or an emotion or maybe a sound inside the room or a sound outside the room. And just as I said before, the trick is not to fight that. You know, you might get the urge to giggle even. The trick is don't fight it. You, you allow yourself to be distracted long enough to make a little mental note of what you're being distracted by. And then once you've made a mental note of what you're being distracted by, then bring all of your attention and all of your awareness back to your breathing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this with you too, because I'm going to leave you just for 60 seconds and see if you can 
allow your focus, your whole cognitive awareness, all of your attention, to rest on your breathing just for 60 seconds. So here we go, I'll do it with you, just a real quick 60 seconds, here we go. Okay, so just allow yourself to slowly come back to clock time. You can wiggle your fingers, you can wiggle your toes, you can come back quick, you can come back slow. There's no rush here. Very important to illustrate there's no rush. And um, what I'm going to discuss today is how to practice uh, mindfulness um, every every day, really. How to use a successful method to bring it into your life and that's a question I get asked a lot you know people find it difficult to make time to do it uh, in actual fact it's easier than you think because you already have something in place which will enable you to do this now um, I usually do this in a class and there's usually more interaction uh, than this and I, I'm actually not really able to to interact so much in these 15 minute sessions because there's so much material for me to give out to you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the same technique I use in the class, but I'm going to kind of try and animate it a little bit so that you, you understand where I'm taking it. So first of all, um, there's probably quite a few people out there who rush to work. Now, we need to think about that for a second, rushing to work. All right. I want you to entertain the idea that that concept itself is a rather strange one. Okay. I want you to entertain the idea that that rushing to work could change. I want you to picture perhaps taking a leisurely journey to work. A journey to work that would be akin to the leisurely style in which you would go and visit a relative on the weekend. All right? So I want you to kind of start to picture that in your head. All right? Now, I'm going to take you through this exercise. Again, you're going to need your, your pads and your pens. So I want you to grab them now because it is going to involve some writing. It is also going to involve some math. So I apologize in advance for that because I know some people are less uh, happy with math than others. So be prepared to get some math going in your head here, all right? So um, what I want you to do, first of all, and I'm going to bring the, the keynote up here so we can actually do this kind of together. I want you in your mind's eye, um your your actually yeah your your start time basically your your shift start time the the time that your shift starts if you have multiple shift patterns uh, i want you to picture um your favorite shift all right so this is the lights out exercise uh, this is very straightforward and we're going to do it nice and slowly so everyone can keep up so write down on that piece of paper the time that your shift starts all right, first thing. Okay, now once you've all done that, I want you to immediately write a new time underneath that. Okay, and the time you write underneath that is 10 minutes less. I want you to subtract 10 minutes from that time you've just written down. Okay, so now you should have two times. The reason you subtract 10 minutes is because if the train is late or the bus is late or whatever, some lateness somewhere happens on your journey that you're still going to be on time for work. Or if you're lucky enough to bump into an old friend, for example, you can have a nice leisurely five-minute chat with them. You can actually talk, actually have a proper conversation. Five minutes is actually a decent length of time to have a little chat with someone, you know. 
So have a little chat with someone if you meet them on the way to work. You know, you can actually take that time. You've got that little extra buffer there, all right? So that's 10 minutes off, okay? Now, from that second time that you've got, I want you to subtract the entire time that it takes you to take a leisurely journey to work, okay? So I want you to really think about that. If you're not rushing onto the tube, you're not screaming around on your bicycle, you're not you know, running for the bus, you know, all those things, all right? You're taking a leisurely journey to work. You might even let one bus go, whatever, you know, you're taking a leisurely journey to work. I want you to put that time in your head and subtract that time. So you'll now have three times written down on that piece of paper, okay? You can probably see where I'm going with this, so stay with me. It may not exactly fit your routine, but the principle is the same, and you can use it to, to your advantage, okay? So now I want you to subtract the entire time it takes you to get from your bed to your front door, so not including your snoozing time, we'll come to that in a minute, from your bed to the front door and have breakfast, okay? So you've got to have some sort of sustenance at home, something hot, like a some sort of hot food at home or hot, at least a hot drink and maybe a banana and an apple or something, but something hot at home, some sort of breakfast, and take that entire time. So put that entire time in your head, the time it takes you to get from your bed to the front door, okay? And subtract that time, all right? So now you should have a fourth time. Let's see. Fourth time, that's right. You should have a fourth time, okay? All right? See where I'm going with this. So now uh, I'm talking to the snoozers, right? You guys are my favorite people. Some people are really advanced snoozers. Some people snooze for 10 minutes, some 20, some 30, some 40, some 50, some an hour, some longer, okay? So whatever your entire snoozing time is, your whole entire snoozing time, all right? I want you to subtract that, okay, as well. So now written down, you'll have five times, okay? Now, I want you to circle this time. So this is your alarm clock time. So you're going to circle two times. This is one of them. All right, so I want you to circle this fifth time that you've come up with, all right? Now, finally, I want you to subtract eight hours from that final time that you've got there. So subtract an entire eight hours from that time, okay? Now, um, I mean, there's a lot of theories around sleep, and um, the eight-hour sleep is, is, you know, it's something of a myth. Humans or well, adult humans require between six and nine hours sleep a night. So if you're getting between six and nine hours sleep a night and you don't feel tired all the time, then you're you're in the right spot. So don't worry too much. But the reason I put eight hours in there is it's just a simple average, okay? Everyone deserves a shot at eight hours. Why not? Okay, so that's, that's the idea. So put that in there. Now circle this time as well, all right? Now that final time you've got there is your lights out time, all right? That's the time that we'll be turning your lights off when you're at home, okay? Now, of course, what you do when your lights are off is entirely up to you, but your your lights are off, you're in bed, your lights are off, you're done, all right? That's you going to sleep, all right, going into sleep mode. Now, bear in mind, I mean, we, we do a whole module based on sleep. Uh, bear in mind, you are preparing for sleep well before this time, all right? So have that in your head, too. You can use your business, you can use your work, your place of work to reset your circadian rhythm, to reset your 24-hour cycle. Uh, circadian rhythm is a, is a natural and a trainable rhythm, all right? So it's something that you can train. Uh, part of the reason that we most of us do sleep in one eight-hour chunk is because we've trained ourselves to do it. Actually, it's not natural, really. I mean, as as a mechanism, we really we take two sleeps in 24 hours. That's actually the way we're designed. But don't worry, because you can train yourself. You can train the body to do this. So you can sleep in that one chunk. Not not everybody can, but I mean, most of us can train ourselves to do it. So don't beat yourself up if you if you feel like you can't train yourself to do that. Now, I want you to think about the personal practice. Remember, these sessions aren't to be taken. Um, in the in a singular right, they are to be taken as a part of the eight se eight sessions. This is an, a part four of an eight session program. Uh, if you haven't already seen one, two, and three, then I recommend you see them this week. After this week, uh, you will have to pay a pound to view the older sessions. 
okay? So get the charts this week, view the first three sessions, all right? So get them under your belt so you've done them by the end of this week. Otherwise, it'll cost you a quid to see them for 24 hours. You get 24 hour access and then you can see it, all right? So just a warning there to get yourself up to date, all right? Um, now, you're, by now, uh, especially if you joined us at the beginning, you will have a practice that you prefer. You would have got the CD that I've, I've given you, or you would have used the car map, and you would have found some practice and some length of practice that you like. Now, if you've chosen, for example, the pause on the CD, that's about four minutes. If you've chosen cinema inside on the CD, that's about nine minutes. If you've chosen the body scan on the CD, then that's about 16 minutes. What you're going to do now is those two circled times on that sheet of paper that you've got there, you're going to subtract the entire time of your preferred practice from those two circled times. All right. This means that you've now got that exact amount of time to put in some mindfulness practice into your pre-existing routine. And once you've done that, you've got this space, you've got this gap, you put that practice in, then you're going to enjoy a nice leisurely journey to work. Okay, so I hope that helps. This is one of those sessions which I think um, should ought to go really at the very beginning of the course, and I think I might switch the order of it after this week. So make sure you watch it, watch one, two, and three this week if you possibly can. Um, so that's all we've got time for today. I know that's quite a lot to take in, but I'm going to send you by email. Uh, that exercise written down so you can look at it on paper and you can do it. But this idea, this concept, is to stop the rush in the morning. It's not that much more time you're asking for than to take a 16-minute maximum or four-minute minimum piece out of it to go to bed 16 minutes earlier, to go to bed four minutes earlier, whatever it is. And then in that time, you know, you know you've got that much space. Plus, you've got this 10-minute extra space. You see what I mean? So there's really no rush. You can relax. You can sit down and you can do your practice. Okay? All right. So there we go. That's all we've got time for. Sorry we went a little bit over today, a couple of minutes over, but apologies. I just wanted to get everything uh, pushed in there as quickly as I could and at the same time slowly enough so that you could take it all down. So look, enjoy your day at work. Um, hope to see you again next week. Look after yourselves. As always, keep the emails coming. Keep everything coming in. And I will respond to you. Give me time. Uh, I meet between 10 and 100 new people a week, so that can affect my response time somewhat. So take care, good luck, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.